After working on a website or a web application locally for a while, we'll need to deploy it to production at some point. This is what we're going to be doing in this lesson. We're going to learn how to deploy a vanilla PHP application to Cloudways. Cloudways is a managed hosting provider that takes away all the hassles of server management and makes deploying your applications a lot easier. Since I was getting close to the deployment topic in the series, I had to make a decision between the shared hosting and VPS and which hosting provider I was going to use for these videos. I personally don't use shared hosting for my PHP applications and provisioning and configuring VPS from scratch to make sure everything is smooth would take a long time. This is why I decided to collaborate with Cloudways because it takes away the complexity and makes things much simpler. It's fast, it's simple and it's reliable. Also unlike shared hosting, servers launched on Cloudways have dedicated resources which is great for the overall server and application performance. We've been working on a simple application throughout this series. It has a custom router that we built, it uses Doctrine ORM, migrations, uses Laravel's container, Symfony's twig, and so on. So I think it's a good idea to see how we can deploy this application. Note that I've made a couple of adjustments to the code behind the scenes and removed some unnecessary bits of code as well. I highly recommend you to follow along the video so that we can deploy this application together. Just make sure to run the docker compose app-d-build to rebuild the containers if you use docker. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is that we need to create a new Cloudways account. So open the browser and type cloudways.com and then click on the start free button right here. Fill out the form and you can use my promo code GIO15 to get a $15 hosting credit. There should be enough to host your application for about one to two months for free, which I think is a great deal because one, you can cancel at any time and two, it gives you plenty of time to try your application in production. Once you've created an account, it should automatically bring you to the server creation page. If not, then you might see a launch now button, so click on that and it's going to bring you to this page as well. Then in the drop down here, we see some presets that make it easier to launch WordPress, Laravel and Magento applications. We could also select a custom app to launch a custom PHP application. In the input boxes here, we enter the name of the application, the server and the project. Then we need to select the hosting platform that will host the application. Cloudways, as I mentioned earlier, handles all the hassle of configuring and securing your application, whether you pick to host it on DigitalOcean, Vulture, Linode, AWS, or Google Cloud. Which one you pick here is up to you. It depends on your project size, requirements, and your budget. As you can see, the monthly price changes right here as we switch the platforms, and also as we scale up and down the server size. DigitalOcean is in my opinion a great start with the cheapest option to just get your app live and then scale up whenever you actually need to. The monthly price here includes the hosting platform's charge so whatever price you see here is what you will pay per month. So this is going to cost $10 a month and with my promo code GIO15 that's about one and a half months of free hosting. Now let's select the location. The nearest location to where I live is New York, so we'll pick that and click launch now. It's going to take a few minutes to launch the server, so we'll fast forward this part. Once the server is up and running, we can manage it by simply clicking on the server. This brings us to the server management page, and the server management is composed of multiple sections. The first one is Master Credentials, which contains the SFTP and SSH access details for all the applications on that server. We'll test the SSH access in just a bit, so let's go through some of the other sections first. We can monitor the server resources right here within the monitoring section, which is very useful because we can use this data to see how the server is performing and determine if it's time to scale up the resources. Managed Services lists the services that are used by the application and by the server. For example, it lists Apache, MySQL, Nginx, and PHP FPM. These are the services that you should be familiar with because we covered them in this series. Varnish and Memcached are the cache layers and you don't need to worry about them right now because it's already configured and taken care of for you by Cloudways. Within the settings and packages, this is where we can manage the server settings along with the packages. So things like the execution limit, the upload size, memory limit, display errors, error reporting, time zone, and so on. 
we're actually going to change some of these because 300 seconds for execution limit is kind of long no script should be running that long we're going to set to 30 seconds the upload file size is set to 100 megabytes which again is kind of high for our use case i'm going to set that to 25 megabytes but this can depend on the application and the requirements the display error of course has to be set to no because we are in production and we don't want to display any errors on the page we're going to set the error report Reporting to production environment and we'll save the changes. Let's switch to the advanced tab and see if we need to change anything here. So we have max input variables set to 10,000 which I think is a bit high as well. This basically is the number of variables that can be uh, passed through the get post and cookie super globals. So we'll set this to maybe 1000 and then we'll increase this if we ever need to. Let's switch over to packages and this is where we determine what php version and mysql and all the other package versions should be using let's change the php version to 8.0 now the cloudways does not yet have the php 8.1 which is why i had to make certain changes on our application to make it work for php 8. the only change that i really had to make was uh, removal of the enum classes because enums are not supported in 8.0 now cloudways team is working very hard to get the php 8.1 added so it might even be added by the time you see this video if not it is coming in the coming weeks let's also update the mysql version to the latest now the mariadb is a fork of mysql so if we click on this there is a latest version here 10.6 so we'll set that and save we don't use the elastic search and we haven't covered the redis or supervisor yet so we don't touch those for now if you want to see a video on supervisor or redis and how to enable it and work with it on cloudways please drop a comment below and if there is enough demand i'll consider working on it let's switch over to optimization and this is uh, basically some kind of uh, disk cleanup optimizations that we can set up we can enable the automatic disk cleanup and let's check all of these checkboxes and save the changes let's switch to the maintenance tab and this is where you can set the maintenance day and time that is more appropriate for your business and application we'll keep it with the defaults for now now let's go to the security section and in my opinion this is one of the most important sections the first option here allows all the IP addresses except those that are blocked by the Cloudway security team. Now I like to go with the second option which blocks all the IP addresses except those that are on the allow list. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to add my IP to this list. We're going to do the same thing for the MySQL. This way we know that only the IPs in the allow list are able to SSH and SFTP into the server now let's switch to the vertical scaling section and this is where you can scale up the server size whenever you actually need to that's why it's a good idea to start with the cheapest option and then scale up your servers as needed now let's switch over to the backup section and this allows us to set up our backup settings and the last section is the smtp section this allows us to configure the smtp service to set up the outgoing email delivery on the server we won't be setting up the SMTP in this video, but if you'd like to see a video on that, please drop a comment below. Alright, so let's now go back to master credentials and SSH into our server. So we're going to copy the username here. Let's open the terminal. Let's do SSH, the username, at sign. Then we need the IP address. We'll type yes and hit enter here. And we'll copy the password paste it here and we are sshed into our server now let's list the directories and there is a single directory called applications and this directory contains all of our applications on this server so we'll cd into applications let's list directories here and we see a single directory with a random name now since we have only a single application on that server it's safe to say that this is our application so let's cd into the directory and list directories here and now we see somewhat familiar directory structure public html is what will contain our application let's cd into the public html list directories and we have the default index.php that cloudway is generated we're going to delete that because we don't need that index.php we're going to deploy our own application now to deploy our application we need to go to a page that allows us to manage applications 
If you go back to the Cloudways within the navigation bar here, we see the applications page. So if we click on that, we can manage our applications from here. And if we click on this application, it brings us to the application management page. Now the application management is also composed of multiple sections. The first section contains the access details like the app URL and MySQL credentials along with the ability to launch the database manager directly from here. Next we have a section for staging management to be able to set up a staging environment and we're not going to be doing that in this video but if you would like to see a video on that please let me know in the comments down below. Now the application management also has a monitoring section which allows us to monitor traffic and requests and bunch of other useful data. It also contains the access and error logs of our application. Now this data is very useful because if we go to the PHP here, we can see there is a section for slow pages. So we are able to track down which pages are slow, we are able to track down which queries are performing slow and then we can optimize them as needed. The next section is the domain management where you can point your domain to the web application. Then we have cron job management where we are able to add a new cron job and schedule these jobs on some kind of interval. We can manage the SSL certificates right here and Cloudway supports Let's Encrypt which provides the free SSL certificate that can be set up right here. Then we have backup and restore and this is a backup of the application level. We already saw the server level backups on the server management page but this is a backup on the application level so you can take a backup and then restore this application from here. Next we have the deployment via git and we'll come back to this in just a minute. I just want to cover the application settings first. So within the application settings this is where we see that random folder name that we saw in the terminal. We also have things like the web root, default email sender address, some additional settings here, FPHP, FPM settings, varnish settings, and so on. We're going to change the web root to public because that's where our application runs. If we open the code here, we see that our index.php is within the public directory. That's our entry point to the application. So we need to set this to public. Alright, so I think we covered pretty much everything that we needed to cover. We can go back to the deployment via git and to be able to deploy from git, we need to generate a new SSH key. So we'll generate that and then we'll view the SSH key, we'll copy that and we need to add this to the repository. So if we go to the github repository here, within the settings page, we need to find deploy keys page we click on that and then we need to add a new deploy key we'll paste this key in here let's title it cloudways we don't need to allow the write access we just need the read access so we'll add that and we'll go back to cloudways and now we need to authenticate it by pasting in the remote address we can get that again from the repository if we go back here we can click on code and copy this SSH remote address here. Let's paste that in here, authenticate, and seems like it was authenticated. And now within the branch dropdown, we should see all the branches here. Let's select the branch that we want to deploy from. Now for this project, we want to deploy from 3.27 PHP 8.0 branch because this is the branch prepared for this lesson. Now if you were deploying your own application, you would probably set up a main or master branch where you want to deploy from. For this, we're going to deploy from this branch. We're deploying within the public HTML directory. So we'll click on start deployment. Once the deployment is done, we can check the deployment logs to confirm the deployment was successful and it was. So if we go back to the access details, we can open the application URL and see if everything is working. Now we open the website and we're getting a 500 error. Let's zoom in on that and as you can see it's HTTP error 500. This is to be expected but let's check the error log to see what's going on. So we'll go here, let's open monitoring, logs, error log and we're getting some kind of error about the autoload. So require once on line 11. So if we open the line 11 on public index, that is this right here. 
which makes sense because this autoload is from the vendor directory and the default deployment directory does not contain vendor. As you can see, this is part of git ignore. The repository on GitHub does not have the vendors directory. We need to run composer install to install all the dependencies. So we need to open our terminal, run ls to list the files and directories and we see that everything is here. Let's run composer install. And once that's done, we need to create an env file, right? We need to store our database credentials. So we'll do vim env and let's copy the env example from here in here and let's fill in the credentials. The database host is localhost or 127.0.0.1. The username, we can get it from the access details and seems like the username and database name are the same. So we'll put that in here and the password is this let's put that in let's save and that should be good enough now let's run the migrations to make sure that we have created the necessary tables so we'll do vendor bin doctrine migrations migrate seems like it worked without any errors now let's go back and refresh the page here and sure enough everything is working as you can see we are on the home page let's visit invoices page and that loads just fine as well and we don't have any invoices in the table and therefore it's displaying no invoices found but if we had any invoices in the table it would display the invoices so as you can see our app is live and everything is working as expected the database connection works because otherwise we would get some kind of sql errors here but everything seems to be working now one thing that I want to go over is that I had to add the HD access file in the public directory. If I go back to the PHP storm here, you will see this HD access within the public directory. I had to add this to make sure that all the requests go through our public index.php. Now another thing to notice is that we had to run the composer install and the migrations manually and we will need to do that every time there is an update. We also need to pull the changes manually. So if we push something to GitHub to update it on live, what we have to do is that we have to go to deployment via Git and do pull right here. There are ways to automate this though through GitHub Actions and Cloudways team I think is working on adding some webhooks to trigger these commands but GitHub Actions might be a better way to automate all of these things. If this is something that you would like to see a video on please let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So this is it for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. We will be starting on the project in the coming lessons so stay tuned for that. Cheers and I'll see you next time.